want <laughs> we want to be as upfront as possible um, with the community and, and uh, make sure that you guys know everything that we are working on. And uh, there is a lot of changes that we've had to make and we are still working on those. And um, I want you to know that our commitment to transparency is, is front and center. Forward thinking, um, you know, proactively, uh, uh, just think about the future and what we could do with the changing environments with new treatments and options and, and th therapies and how we could, use that information to share it with, with the community. And collaboration uh, is, is again, working with all of our stakeholders from patients, doctors, other uh, advocacy groups, and then not just in hypoparathyroidism, but other rare diseases. And one of the things that I've done recently is had this idea to um, reach out. And I don't know why we haven't done it in the past, but we've reached out to a couple of the other Facebook groups that are out there, the Lodge and the NAPPAIR support group for all and some of the other ones. And we're going to start meeting with the leaders of those groups and figuring out how we could help each other out. And it's not because it's not just about the hypoparathyroidism association. It's about all of us coming together as one community and one family and, and advocating on our behalf and for change. So I just I want to thank uh, the board. And I especially want to thank Bob Friedenberg for, for helping us kind of get some of these rocks in place and really uh, get these balls rolling. And, and since then we've done actually quite a bit. Um, so again, uh, this slide, I kind of talked about what some of the other people have been working on and what some of their rocks have been. So I know a lot of you back in April, we had been working with this list on this listening session with the FDA for quite some time, a few months, four or five months and <laughs> the story behind it is, is we finally got our listening session approved and I've learned so much about the processes within the FDA from going through this exercise and I'm excited to continue to move forward. Um, but what, what we, what we did is, is initially we wanted to go in and we weren't sure if the FDA actually knew the struggles that we were having, especially since we did not have any product on the market. Uh, any therapies uh, approved, FDA approved therapies on the market with the uh, recall of NAPPARA. We were really, we didn't know how much they understood of, of our situation. And so we kind of wanted to go in there and educate them a little bit more about the disease and how everyone's different and, and that kind of thing. And it was interesting about two weeks before our listening session, they, they called us back and requested that we meet with the agency and refine our, uh, our meeting format. And they commit, they made a commitment to us. They said, we understand the struggles that the community has. And we understand what you guys are going as far as the symptoms that everybody has, maybe not to the full extent, but they wanted to hear a lot about how we've done on these new therapies because there was not para was on the market and their, uh, Forteo was off label. And there's been a trial for, um, uh, da, 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 Ascendus, uh, the transcon trial was ongoing. And so we had some perspective on that as well as, as calcilytics with uh, what they were going through on their ADH1. Uh, I'm drawing a blank here. It's that therapy. And Calorette. <laughs> yeah, and Cartlet. Uh, so we took that as a positive thing. And um, so we, re, we had to re, completely redo our format and we went in with the help of Dr. Manstadt, Dr. Rubin and Dr. Kohlmeier to, to speak on the, as far as the, um, the doctor's perspective and Danette, uh, Travis, um, gosh, I'm drawing a blank. Sorry, brain fog, right? It, calcium less than 8.6 equals brain fog. <laughs> but, you know, so we, we were able to actually give them a lot of good information. We got some good feedback from the agency uh, as far as, as ideas of what they need. Uh, they said as soon as they get done compiling their report, then they'll release that and then we could release their statement. But I think all this, all this comments that our patients spoke of during that listening session have been Warrior Wednesdays uh, thereafter. Um, and it really opened the door, I think, 
knowing for for a, a PFDD, which I think is the next the next thing that we are working on with the agency as well as is, is uh, um, uh, what is it? it it's <laughs> anyways, so PFDD, what that is, for those who don't understand, it's a patient focused drug development group, and that's in collaboration with NORD. <clears throat> and we'll be able to use it, it. So the listening session was 45 minutes of us talking and 10 minutes of them asking questions. And that was it. And it was very structured. And this PFDD will allow us to bring industry together along with with doctors and researchers, as well as patients, because they really want to, to understand the patient perspective. And that was one of the, the greatest positives I've seen come out of or learned about the agency is that they really understand that they need to, the, the patient's perspective, especially when they're developing new therapies or approving new therapies, how is it gonna affect the overall quality of life of the patients? And it's not, it's not a one size fits all, but, um, and those changes, hopefully will be worked into the labels of those, those, uh, those drugs to help people get approved for them a lot easier. Uh, but we'll be able to bring all these, these stakeholders together under one roof. And the amount of patients we could bring into there is, is we could bring in as many as, as we can. And if it's online, then hopefully we'll have a lot of patients, you know, a lot of you guys, patients and caregivers, giving your feedback as well, because as the agency is asking questions to the doctors or the pharmaceuticals, or even to the patients that are on the panel, everyone that's involved or everyone that's present in that room will have an opportunity to answer those questions and give their feedback. And all that information is gathered and collected and sorted out to, so they have an understanding of exactly where we are with the disease state and where we need to go for uh, future research, future funding, what studies need to be done. And um, so, I mean, that, that, that's gonna be cool. And hopefully we could get that one set off for next year. So that's kind of what we've been working with the FDA. Again, I'm just waiting patiently for the agency to give us their feedback so we could share what uh, their overall feedback was because we don't even know a hundred percent, Just we just got based off of some of the questions that they were able to ask us. So we did our first webinar, like I said, and it was uh, with Calcolytics on a cartlet. And, and one of the things that inspired us is, is we went to Endo this last year and Dr. Gaffney and, and they presented their findings at Endo. And uh, we've been working with Jocelyn Asford over at Calcolytics and, and she's such, such a sweetheart. And, you know, like, well, let's do a webinar. Let's, let's um, start spreading some hope. Right, because one thing I, I learned with this last uh, NAPARA update uh, essentially was there was seemed to be a lot of disparity in the community that I really wasn't aware of. And we, as an organization, have not been doing the best job that we could do by uh, disseminating a lot of this information. Uh, and, and I apologize for that. I apologize for that on behalf of my board as well. Um, but I, I, just, I was like, you know, there is reason for hope. There's, there's new therapies that are on the market. There's therapies in trial. Um, th there's good things coming. It might not be immediate and it's not going to solve our immediate needs right now, but there is good things coming <clears throat> down that pipeline. And one of the things was, was this calcolytics and it's, it's for the ADH1, it works on the calcium receptors for those with the ADH1 gene uh, deficiency mutation. And so it's a very sub, it's a subgroup of a subgroup of, you know, so it's like one in 70,000, but it shows that there is interest in research inside the hypoparathyroidism field. And that research is ongoing. And the, 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 the results from their trial phase are outstanding. I think everybody that went on it was off supplements that had this calcium receptor, the, the calcolytics turned on their calcium, essentially turned on their calcium receptors again, or enhanced them to where they were able to maintain their calcium levels. Uh, it was really promising. And, and good news for today is it was the, the press release came out from uh, Calcolytics today that 
they were just approved from the agency as an expedited or an emergence or an expedited uh, trial, right? So essentially, when it comes to finishing their phase two data that they're working on now and, and they go to their phase three, that all these, these reviews are expedited and they're put on the front burner. And I don't know if I'm not, I don't know if that had anything to do with our FDA listening session or not. And I, I hope that bringing that awareness to the agency may have had some impact on those types of decisions. And we'll be able to use those decision, you know, those relationships that we have formed with the agency uh, when it comes to other emerging therapies or even, have, you know, like uh, the Ascendus when they finally release their data for their phase three trial or, or, um, when that para comes back and they're ready to review, submit their information, we'll be able to call on those relationships we had and push for an expedited review of those, those, uh, those trials and that information. So that's, that's kind of what it's all about. But this, this genetics, uh, this webinar was really good. I don't know if you had, I want to thank all those who were able to attend a couple weeks ago. Um, it was fascinating. I even learned, I learned a lot and I actually got a couple questions in uh, just out of my own curiosity, right? So it does show that there is interest in the hypoparathyroidism field and that it's not just people aren't forgetting about, it. there is interest and, and that is that is a positive thing. Uh, one of the other things that we've been working on is this world task force on hypopara and hyperparathyroidism. Uh, and this one, uh, Debs was involved in this from the beginning, uh, and they were helping uh, formulate some of the questions and get some of the patient perspectives. And it's over 100 endocrinologists from all over the world have been writing these recommendations in these, these different groups. And I think they sent these survey questions out to over a thousand other doctors worldwide to get these results in. And what they're working on is standardizing a treatment plan for hypoparathyroidism and hyperparathyroidism that will be universal throughout the world. Um, something that could be published and taught in schools to where, you know, this hasn't been done in, in a long time. And I'm hoping that, uh, this will help bridge some of that gap. And, you know, as, as we were sitting there working with, with some of these doctors, you know, they, they, they got to the recommendations and the way it worked is they'd ask a question on treatment, you know, on these, these endocrinologists on how they treat certain symptoms. And if 70% or more of those respondents came back for that particular question, then it was a graded question. And if it was below 70%, then it was a recommendation and, it has been absolutely fascinating to see these these people work, and uh, I, awe inspiring just the amount of people that are interested and want to help us out. I was a little disheartened because you know when it got time to okay, well let's look at some of the uh, synthetic hormone uh, replacement therapies, and they mentioned that uh, it is not a recommendation for the first, and and the reason is a forced form of treatment. And the reason is, is they don't have enough data to make that assumption. It's been, has it been on the market? And so it's, it showed us that we need to do some more surveys, some more, some more studies, uh, essentially a post-market study to look at the long-term effects of some of these uh, different therapies that have been on the market. And then hopefully at some point in time, we could get some of this language to be changed as, as well. Uh, so that's, that's really cool. Uh, just to kind of give you some, an idea of some of the doctors that I was at a meeting, and this will be coming out later this year, the, the, this, this paper. And these are some of the doctors that were involved, right? And this is just who was on this last call on Friday. And I don't know if you could see some of them. You have uh, John Belziki and Manstadt, Shobat, Clark, uh, doctors from all over the world, uh, Lars. Uh, it, it's, it's too many. It's awe-inspiring. Uh, to be honest with you, right? And like, so this is just the people that were on this last call on Saturday. So, but that's going to be coming out later on this year, those recommendations. So we're, we are making progress uh, moving forward in that direction. Um, I wanted to make sure I had enough time 
to try and answer as many questions as far as what the organization is working on and what we've been working on uh, for the community as we can. Uh, so we got about half an hour left or so um, to do that. But we are going to be, as, as these rocks start taking place and as we start doing more and more, uh, we are going to be looking for volunteers who are willing to help. So there is a link on the website that you could sign up for to be a volunteer. And uh, as we, again, as we start rolling out some of these webinars um, and uh, so another one of the ideas in addition to the webinars is I know years ago, my parents, and some of you may remember this, but they had like regional communities set up throughout the country, uh, little subgroups of the hypoparathyroidism association, essentially. And we have the, the idea of bringing that back. And uh, it, we're still kind of organizing on how we want to do that and how that's going to look like. But I mean, we are working on quite a bit of stuff right now, and we are going to be looking for volunteers. And for those who have already volunteered and continue to volunteer, thank you. And those keep your stories coming because we're going to need those for uh, FDA stuff. We're going to need them for the Warrior Wednesdays. They're just truly inspiring. Uh, and I, I love seeing your guys' stories come through. And, you know, we, we do work with different pharmaceutical companies and we do get funded uh, by these these companies. And I just, uh, it's, it's fact of life and we, we try and be as transparent as we can with what they have to offer. So I wanna thank Ascendus Pharma and Amy Kneffler and all the work that she has done with Ascendus in moving that forward. I don't know who all was on that call with Ariana today, her book reading uh, earlier today, World Hypoparity, but that was fantastic. And I wanna thank Ascendus Farmer for putting that on and Amy for all the hard work that she did and especially Ariana for uh, coming out like that. And just, uh, it's such an inspiring uh, story to tell. Uh, again, Jocelyn Ashford with Calcilytics uh, and all the work that she's been doing. Uh, we worked with her quite a bit. And um, I, I, again, thank you. And Amylite Pharma, uh, I don't know if Deb's on, but I can't remember who that uh, contact is with Amylite. Deb usually works with her. That's a French company. So, but it's, you know, they got there, they have a product in trial, another long acting parathyroid hormone that they have been working on as well. And I think it's a version of uh, the one through 84, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, you know, we got exciting things coming from them. And then Takeda, uh, and uh, you guys all know Takeda, but Elizabeth um, Stoltz, uh, she's been awesome to work with. I try and keep contact with, with her as often as I can. Um, if you love greyhounds, Elizabeth, uh, she's, she's a greyhound, uh, what is it? Um, rescue. She, she rescues greyhound dogs. So she sends me pictures of all of her, her greyhounds that she gets. But I, I do want to thank these companies for, for working with us and, and helping supply funds so we could put on these webinars and we could put on the conferences and we could start working with the agency more and more and, and uh, get some of these projects done so we could start moving in a more forward direction. So I want to thank, uh, thank them. And I think I think that's it for the slides. Let me um, let me stop sharing my screen since you can see all my <laughs> all my bookmarks up here. And I think I'm on presenter mode. Am I correct? Hopefully you could see me. <laughs> yes. Okay. So with that, I, I, I do well we'll open it up to some questions. I know we had a couple that were were fielded. Um, just to, it, it wasn't as many as I thought, but we did field a couple from um, that were submitted. I, again, if it's a lot of medical questions, I may or may not be able to answer them. Uh, I'm, I'm still learning as I go, and I'm not going to say I'm an expert in this at all, but I do have a lot of people that I can lean on, and I, ex you know, we will definitely get those questions to the right people if I cannot answer them. So... Uh, so I guess, Michelle, do you want to read some questions or see if anyone has any questions in the chat? Yeah, there is some in the chat. Um, the first one is any news on transcon level three studies opening in the Midwest? Um, I know, I, I believe there is some sites 
that are supposed to be opening. I don't know what the schedule is on those. I will get with, with Amy and let me write that down. Uh, hold on. If we, can we just let people know, first of all, if you are still watching and you have any questions, go to the question and answer button at the top of the page and type it in and we'll read them. Also, if there's any questions we don't have the answers to today, we will get them to you and we will either post them on social media or the website or both. Yeah, and this this is being recorded, and we'll we'll have the whole event up on the website as well, so you can look back. But I will, um, and you can always check with keep checking back with the with the Ascendus team on their website and see when those uh, those sites are opening up, and uh, make sure you sign up. Uh, it's it's a small trial, but it's it, it's good, and it's you know it's it's good that it's small because it'll help expedite that process. So. Hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have this, we'll have uh, be able to move forward with that. But I will definitely ask Amy, so ask. Okay. So, all righty. And then the next question is, this is a good one. Will there be a conference this year? You sort of touched base on that, but maybe we should give people the dates. Yeah, so we will have a conference this year. Uh, we usually been in the past, we have been teaming up with FICA. And so we were kind of waiting to see uh, if FICA was going to be doing uh, a virtual or in person or a hybrid. And Gary over at FICA came out and said that they're going to be doing a virtual this year because it was there was still a lot of uncertainty and we had to get things booked and we didn't know. Uh, now with the vaccine out there and, and people are starting to move around and things are starting to open up, we probably could have done an in-person conference, but we're going to focus on putting together the best virtual conference that we can, hopefully as successful, if not more successful than last year. Uh, those dates are going to be, correct me if I'm wrong, Michelle, but uh, October 15th through the 17th. It is a Friday, Saturday, and a Sunday. Um, last year, we had over 500 people attend and from many countries. I can't remember the amount of countries uh, were able to join from around the world. So uh, you go ahead and save those dates and we'll start putting out information on uh, that conference as uh, it starts getting formulated. But yeah, the conference will be the 15th, 16th and 17th of this year. And it will yes, be. Yes, and regist go ahead. registration should open in mid-July. Yeah. So keep an and eye to, out. For that. To to answer the question about the uh, Midwest, uh, the University of Chicago, um, who participated in phase two, is they're opening their site with a Dr. Vokes, V-O-K-E-S. So that's at the University of Chicago for the person who asked about sites in the Midwest. Okay. I'm just, thank you. Thank you, Barry. And this is Barry. You're welcome. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> okay. All right. So what else have we got? Next question is, it says, what about the calcometer? I think they're trying to talk about like a calcium blood monitor. So there's been, I know uh, the Hypopara UK, they were getting, they've been working with, I want to, I want to say it was Takeda. It helped fund some calcium monitor research that they were doing in the UK. I, and Liz was updating us at the last conference and said that they were going to start working on trials for it. Um, but COVID was in the middle of everything and it kind of slowed everything down. And that's in the UK. As far as I know, Dr. Levin is working on one and the Hypoparathyroidism Association has been funding grants for a monitor as well. And that is definitely an area that at some point we'd love to help fund that research. But right now, I don't know of any any uh, monitor device that is on the horizon. Positive note, um, we did bring that up in our, our listening session with the FDA, and they are putting us in contact with the part of the agency that deals with the medical devices. So uh, hopefully, though, that conversation will continue to move forward and we'll be able to give updates uh, on that. Okay. Okay. The next question is, um, is there any research going on regarding uh, genetic um, hypopara and the different genes? 
So I don't know. There, there's quite a few genes. I don't know what all research has been done on, on those particular genes, like the ADH1 with calcilytics uh, and the incartlet, that was a gene therapy essentially, right? Um, I, don't, I don't know specifically what they're working on. Uh, I, I could reach out to some of the medical advisory board and, and see if they might know. Uh, I'm sure I'm sure there is continued, uh, you know, there's people continually looking at, it. I just don't know in what aspect. I know uh, like the TBX1 gene, it's, it's what my family has. And all I saw was a paper on, it. I don't know if there's any research being done on some of the, on how to solve those problems or not, but at least, at least we might, you know, I have an answer on what mine is, but I know there's lots of you out there that are idiopathic that don't necessarily haven't found the cause of your hypoparathyroidism. So hopefully in the future, we'll have a lot of those um, sorted out and, and have answers to that question, to that as well. Okay. Someone asked about the paper that you were talking about with the standard of care. I think that's the one that the you and Deb are on that board for. Um, yes. When it comes out, will we be uh, posting it somewhere or directing the community so that they can share it with their doctors? Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, it's going to, I think they're going to announce it during JAMA. JAMA? Are you on, Deb? I don't know if Deb's on. But no. anyways, well, they'll be announcing it in JAMA. And I think once it's public, we'll be able to share it. And, and as long as we could put it on our website, then we will put it on the website front and center. And we'll make sure that everyone is aware of that uh, release once it is released. But I'm, I'm excited. I think they're anticipating it to be released mid to late summer so within the next couple months i mean they're they're just finalizing the the final the word the wording of that so um that was uh, that's been outstanding and i want to give a shout out to dr khan because she's been doing a rock search at least from my perspective she's the one that's kind of ramrodding everything and, and holding all those those making sure that it stays on track she's been doing an outstanding job so I'm excited to see those the, the final paper when it comes out. But yeah, that it will be released in JAMA um, later on this year. So at, that will be, a, we can expect that for sure. So yes, um, make sure this you is a question it. about, sorry. Okay, um, that's all right. If, uh, do we have any update on the work of the oral PTH pill that was being developed? Um, do we, I, I know I believe one of the doctors talked about it recently. Maybe it was at our webinar and said that it, it got stunted. Is, correct me if I'm wrong. That might be referring to uh, what Dr. Levine was working on. So let me kind of refer that to him. Uh, I, I, I'm hoping, and Dr. Levine, he will be at this next conference. I'm hoping he give an update on that. I believe that was what he was working on with his lettuce therapy. Um, which is fascinating, right? Who would have thought? Yes. Been <laughs> taking lettuce and growing the proteins. So <laughs> I will reach out to Dr. Levine and, and find out uh, if he could give an update on that. And if not, we will have an update for sure at this conference coming up and what, when he speaks. We'll see if he can update that for sure. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure I understand this question, but I'll read it. What is the best way to interest a medical company in following us as hypopara patients for new indications such as bone stimulation or other procedures? Um, you know, talking, I'm not hundred percent sure. I, I would say get with your doctors and, um, and, and see if, if they can't, if they have any contacts or if you could get a hold of the, the companies. Most of these Pharma companies have uh, public relations specialists that they that work with the community. Uh, in, in recent years, I, I, again, this is this is something that's fairly recent. That the patient perspective is so so important with when it comes to developing new therapies. Um, so I'm sure if if it is a it is a pharmaceutical company or a medical company that they would have a patient liaison, and it's just a matter of of getting a hold of them, get, getting a hold of the company, and finding out who that is. Uh, you get a contact from there and then see if they can't uh, either 
forward them to the the association or we can help put them in contact with some other doctors as well but um hopefully that answered your question uh I, again i think i think um like this would this would be a reason for the pfdd and how that could change the narrative and and what people are looking at in some of the areas that need to be researched because there's still a lot that they don't understand about hypopara and when we get industry leaders and we get doctors and patients and caregivers all together that they'll be the agency and these other companies will have a greater understanding of what the needs of the community are and those areas of research and that's going to be public information so even 10 years down the line if someone else comes in and they they again they want to do something with bone stimulation or some other area in hypoparathyroidism they'd be able to go back to that pfdd and look at that information that was gathered um and and see if there is an area that they could help on so i hope that answered the question but i mean that's that's the main drive why i'm, I'm so excited for this pftd that patient focused drug development meeting so i am super excited for that and and yes. keep your ears out we will we definitely need volunteers and help for, to make that one happen so okay do we, this next question is sort of related to that last one. It says, do we know if there's any long-term studies that have been done or are being done on hypo patients regarding long-term taking of calcitriol and calcium, and especially in related to taking those medications along with taking other medications? I don't know. I, I'm sure there's some long-term studies on cal, there, there's a lot of studies on just taking standard of care calcium and, and calcitriol. Uh, the what the area that they're lacking is long-term studies on uh, some of the the gene therapy or the hormone replacement therapies. That's where that's some of the information that they need. And, and that, like I said, they understand uh, the issues that we have with re renal disease and the brain fog and the calcium deposits and all that stuff. They they understand that. And they know there's a problem there. Um, the hopefully with with this task force, uh, you know, when that comes out, it'll have a lot of that. But I know I know they pulled a lot of that data. There was hundreds and hundreds of research papers that they pulled data out of to to really understand where the medical community as a whole worldwide was with treatment of hypopara. So there's a lot of information on that. Um, but as far as the new therapies on the market, there's not a lot of long-term, there is no long-term study that I am aware of. And that is an area that hopefully we could help uh, get involved with. I know Deb has been working with contacting some of the people at the NIH about getting some of these studies done. So as we move forward with these, we'll need volunteers to help some of these take on some of these studies as well. So again, uh, it's a great question and, and keep an eye out for upcoming information as, as we start moving forward. Okay, next question actually goes back to the previous question about the oral PTH. Somebody else responded and said, it's not related to the lettuce therapy, but there was a company in Israel called Entera oh. that was studying the oral PTH. And so do we have any more information on where that study is? Okay, I, I that dropped my mind. I don't know, I will, Deb knows more about that because she was dealing, she's been dealing with that company. Um, I will have, I will have to ask uh, Deb about that and I will get you that information. We'll post the answers uh, to that on the website. Um, but yes, I, I don't, I, myself, I don't have the updated information. I apologize for that, but you're absolutely right. There is a company in Israel that is, is working on that. So. Um, I think you touched up on this in your speech, but somebody asked the question, so I'm gonna pose it. Uh, it. It's talking about dental issues and do we have any, you know, information or places they can go to get information on hypopara dental issues? I am working hard. Years ago, uh, there was a dentist that w attended one of our conferences uh, from Idaho Falls. He's a doctor first, and then he's a dentist second, and his name was Dr. Greenhall. I have been working actively to try and get him and, and host a webinar. As soon as I get him nailed down, I will for sure let you guys know. Uh, there was a webinar just the other day put on by Nord 
that talked about uh, dentist, dentistry and rare diseases, not specifically hypopara per se. And uh, we're in the con we're in this process of reaching out to the presenters of that information and see if, again if we could get uh, have a webinar uh, posted on the dentistry because I know that is such a hot topic as well as as, as cataracts and, and an ophthalmologist. So those are some of the areas that I I'm really pushing for either a webinar or at least to have them in as a topic for the next conference in October. But I, I'm I'm working. It is. Dr. Greenhall has a, a secretary and that lady is a gatekeeper and getting through the gatekeeper is proving to be a challenge. <laughs> I've met my <laughs> match. <laughs> Keeping um, in the of what she's doing, right? So, hey, Bob, a lot of the stuff I think that you're um, talking about and, and um, people are asking questions is gonna be a lot of the great topics that are gonna be at the conference as well. Yeah. So like when we put out the agenda and, and get everybody the registration up, make sure you register for that so that you can get all the answers to these questions. Yes. As well as stuff we'll send out in between. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, there, was a, there was a couple questions that I got uh, through the email. Well, not email, but that, we, that were, were sent in. And I got them last night. And I was actually able to reach out to Dr. Manstadt and Dr. Rubin. And I had a response, you know, in about 15 minutes from Dr. Manstadt. He was on it. So I, I thanked him for the short and I, I apologize for the short notice, but thanked him for his quick response. Um, and one of the questions was, is it common to have high PTH levels years after surgery, not gland parathyroids or parathyroid, not gland parathyroids removed? It is now being recommended that doctors wait one year before diagnosing someone with hypopara. And Dr. Manstadt, he goes very short answers, but he wrote, the longer hypoparathyroidism persists after surgery, the less likely it will recover. Most patients who recover have done so by 12 months. For practical purposes, many endocrinologists use the 12 month mark when they declare the hypoparathyroidism condition as permanent, but there will still be a few people whose parathyroid function recovers even after one year. So not all hope is lost. And then the, the other question I had was, are hypopara patients more at risk while undergoing surgery? And at what precautions should one take before the surgery? And again, man, Dr. Manstadt wrote, he goes, there is a risk of hypocalcemia and treatment related hypocalcemia during and after surgery. The surgeons and anesthesiologists need to know about your condition, your medication and target lab values often and they, they consult with your doctor or the medical team. I know I had my I had to have my uh, gallbladder removed uh, back in January, and I had many conversations, not only with my personal physician, but my surgeon, and made sure that they were checking my calcium levels before and after to make sure that we weren't gonna have any issues. I think I took an extra, started take, I took an extra calcium pill every day for the leading up to it, just to make sure I was not having any issues there. Um, again, uh, Dr. Ruin, he had a great talk, uh, at the last conference and it is still up on the website. So again, it, it, that talks about preparing for upcoming surgeries and questions that you should ask your doctors, uh, ahead of surgeries. Um, and it, it, it's pretty in depth. It goes what time of day you should have your surgeries during the week. Uh, it just it really, really outstanding talk. Like again, that, those talks are still up on the website. You just have to be registered as a member in order to access some of that information. Again, the membership, there is no membership fee. I mean, all, we're, we're strictly operating on donations from the community to keep things going and to help fund the work that we're doing. And, and hopefully in the future that, you know, we'll have enough funds that we'll be able to start funding some research as well. So and those were two of the questions that I had that were sent in. Hold on, there might be some others I'd have to look. Do you have anything else in the meantime, Michelle? Yeah, uh, there's a couple more in the chat. Um, somebody is asking on here, we talked about needing volunteers, but do we have any specific type of volunteers we're looking for? And um, if we don't have the list now, are, can, are, is it gonna be posted on the website? Uh, yeah, uh, so so one of the one of the things that uh, the exercises we did with Dr. Bob or with Bob Friedenberg, uh, Joellen's husband, is we did 
a three month plan, six month plan, one year and kind of work or three year and 10, 10 year plan. And he said one of the traps that most organizations fall into is they have these lofty goals and they have a lot of them. But if you take on more than three goals at any given time, four at the most, well, then you tend up not getting anything done. So as as we are finishing up some of our rocks, just, just getting things started, we still, we're starting to see where we need help with. One of the areas I know we need for sure that we could use help with for sure is grant writing. I know there are some grants that uh, we should be accessing or could be accessing, and, and we don't have any grant writing experience amongst the board, the current board. And I, I, you know, one of you may hope there may be able to help in that area. Um, I'd have to ask the rest of the board that is on, is there anything that you guys have seen that you need help with with any of the rocks that you're currently working on? I don't know. But yeah, as as we as we get into this thing and we actually start moving these rocks forward, then we, you know, we'll be able to post those positions and be more specific in, 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 into what we need. And I again I want to thank you for that. Okay. Is there anything else before we, I got and before everyone goes, I, I want to bring in one surprise, but I'm going to have to disappear for a second. So I'll take just a couple. Okay. okay. While um, you disappear, I just want to um, remind so everyone that we do have an Instagram and Twitter accounts that you can follow, Hypopara Association. And we would love um, some more Warrior Wednesday stories, as Bob said, which we will use for Warrior Wednesday and our PFDD. And you can send those to admin at hypopara.org or to bvapnik at hypopara.org. Thank you. Okay, we'll do one more question, then I'll go get my surprise real quick. Oh no, I have two good questions. Oh, okay, two quick questions. Dude, then... We're gonna do two and then I'm not gonna take any more. One, yeah. we, um, I think, I'm not sure if you touched base on this in your speech or not, but this person is asking about questions about um, whether or not we even maintain a list of doctors. She's looking for a new endo and a nephrologist. So this is a good point to talk about our work on that area. Yeah. So. That was one of my rocks. Um, I am, we, Deb and I are in the process of putting together, I'm, I'm not gonna call it a symposium, but we got, we'll get with all of our medical advisors and have an annual meeting with them. And one of the questions that I have for them is I wanna put together a list of endos that we, you know, uh, we'll need to get some uh, recommendations from the community for sure, but we need to have a way to vet them and I'm sure uh, between the, our, the medical, of our, our, our advisors on our board would have a list of questions that they could help vet some of these doctors before we recommend them on the website. So that is an area that we are definitely working on. Um, another area in, in, in that we would like to work on as well, and I, I'll, we'll be sending out a survey here in the next month, asking some, quick, some basic demographics. And the idea behind the demographics is I'd like to, It'd be neat to know where everybody is. So at, we had talked earlier about forming different uh, groups or communities in certain areas of the country. Um, I know in Virginia, there's seven or eight people at least that I know of that meet together that have hypopara. I, Barry just posted a, a, a thing on Facebook where she met with the hypopara community member up here in North Dakota. I'm myself and my daughter, are the only ones that I know of. So, but it would be really neat if, it, you know, and that, that's something I want to put on the website and just keep that updated, keep the live update. And Joellen is already, I think she has a plan on how to make that work. Uh, but being able to, you know, where you could get on and you could click on a region and see what recommended endocrinologists are available, as well as any community members that may or may not be close to you. So you can start forming some of those relationships as well. So those are definitely two of the rocks that I am working on. Um, so keep an eye out for some of those surveys and then uh, I'll update you. We'll keep you updated on the doctors on, on uh, some of those things. But yeah, hopefully by okay. the end, we'll good start on those. Here's, here's the last, it's sort of a question, sort of a not uh, suggestion. Um, someone says, my cousin's wife writes children's book and about books about having diseases and these are put in pharmacies in the waiting area. Might we have a way to sponsor Ariana's book into to be put into pharmacies or endo offices? You know, that's that's a great idea. I, I know one of the rocks that we had talked about, I think it's 
not this year. Well, I don't think it was to be done this year was to help put some educational information, but this is something yeah, I'm working on that. <laughs> I hadn't even thought of that. That's, that's a great idea. Um, and like I said, I just got done hosting that event uh, with uh, Ariana this afternoon and it was fantastic. Again, hopefully you guys were able to see that, but that was fantastic. Um, and if you don't know what uh, she, Ariana's book is, it, is Ariana was a patient that was diagnosed with Gray's disease and uh, ended up having her thyroids removed and subsequently had all of her parathyroids removed. And she was, I think she was 15 and her whole life kind of crumbled around her. And instead of, it is such an inspiring story. So, and, and, and she wrote a children's book, uh, it's called Ariana Rose, The Courage of, or the Courage of Story Hope. of Courage. Yeah, story, story of Courage. Story of Courage. And it's, it's an absolutely fabulous book. And I, I recommend if you haven't seen it, I know it's on Kindle, um, but if you haven't seen it, I recommend picking it up. It is a great book. Um, and she made a video in 2018. She was supposed to be our keynote speaker at our conference in Chicago and she was ill and not able to make the, the trip. And so we asked her to make this video and she made a video that you could, you could look it up on, on uh, Facebook. I mean, not on Facebook, on YouTube. And it's just Ariana Finer. If you look her up that way, it'll come up. And I can't remember the exact name of that, that film, but it, it'll bring tears to your eyes. It's about five minutes long. And she has won over 30, 30 awards from that, or been over to 30, uh, film festivals around the world for, for her video and her book. So that is such, that is such a good idea. Um, I will have to reach out to her and see how we can make that happen. But I, I really love that idea. I like it a lot. So I'm going to, and I'm gonna, I'll go on Barry. There will be a short um, recap of today's event that'll be put out uh, next week, about a three to five minute video um, highlighting some of the feet, uh, some of her talk today. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to disappear it, just for a couple minutes. I'll let uh, Michelle or Barry or you, or you guys kind of introduce yourself and then I'll be right back. <laughs> Hold on. Um, I'm Michelle. Uh, I set up IT stuff for, for the organization, help with sponsorship and I'm helping Patty work on um, the conference. Um, and just to let you all know, any questions that did not get answered today, I've been trying to type um, answers to some of you, uh, or at least to let you know that um, some of these more involved medical questions um, that require a true like medical expert advice, we are going to ask our board of medical advisors and then get those answers to you via the website and or social media. Um, so please don't think we're ignoring you. We will get those answered. Barry, do you want to say something? I'm Barry. I run um, uh, most of the social media. I work directly with Joellen, who is the creative director of the Hypo Power Association. She's amazing, and I love working with her and everyone on the board. Um, but together, creatively, um, she's taking it to the next level, and it's it's been great. And <laughs> We would love help. You know, I saw someone wrote they want to help with the website or social media. Definitely please email admin at hypopara.org and we will um, take you all up on that. So thank you. Patty. Hi, everybody. I'm Patty. And um, as Bob said, I'm kind of working on the conference and keeping us in line. <laughs> <laughs> <The board. laughs> trying to keep us uh, keep all our rocks together and keep us progressing forward so um, if I thought about volunteer help that we would need um, from my perspective it would be more about um, help with uh, getting more corporate sponsors and fundraising and things like that so that we can get ourselves out there a little bit more um, so that we can do these wonderful ideas that you guys are, are suggesting. And it looks like our surprise is here. So, so turn it back over to Bob. I, again, uh, my son graduated high school uh, on Sunday. So my parents uh, decided to, they made the long journey uh, up to North Dakota. I think it was a 12 hour drive. They, they left at nine o'clock in the morning and they rolled up 
about 1.30 in the morning that night. Like it was a long drive for, for my parents and my younger brother. But I know they've been such an inspiration to many of you and uh, for those who've had a chance to meet them throughout the years. I just wanted to give them an opportunity to say hi to community one uh, another time and, and hopefully in the future we'll be able to, to see them again. But mom. Hi, how are you doing? And hi, Deb, I see you up there. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had a chance to see you or talk to you for so long, but I'm glad you're still part of this association because you were so good to be part of it before. I so really did so much. Yep. There's dad. <laughs> <laughs> but so they, I, again, like I, I when when they asked me to join the board, I had no idea what I was stepping into and I was completely lost and Again, I'm not going to lie, I, I didn't know what I was doing other than I grew up with Hypopara, but I, you know, I just took for granted all the work that my parents had put into this organization. And I never really understood how powerful this organization was until I attended. And I, 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 it's an embarrassment, but until I attended my first conference when I was in, in Chicago, um, it's hard. I, I can't believe I, I, you know, that's what it was. But I, growing up, I just, I was, it was always just a big part of my life and I didn't think anything of it. And then when, uh, when my parents stepped down and retired and I got to watch numerous people walk up and hug them and, and tell them how much they appreciated them and how they saved multiple you know, lives and the impact that they've had on the community. It just, it's overwhelming. And I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to fill those shoes, but I am going to try and my commitment to the organization that I will continue to try. Um, and I want to thank everybody for attending this call, this little town hall event. And hopefully we'll have more of them in the future and I'll make a commitment. We'll, do, we'll have more, more of them in the future. And if you guys have any ideas, please, please let us know, reach out to us and we will do what we can to accommodate you. But I got an outstanding board behind us now and because of them, we're actually able to start moving again and actually moving in the right direction. And I want to thank uh, the previous members of the board for the work that they did in laying the foundation for what we have today. And I, I'm so excited for the future. I have such great hope for the future. And uh, we're going to be able to have impact. And we're going to be able to make changes. And I'm excited to, to do it with all of you. And, and continue to work with all of you. Uh, again, thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing me to be a, a, a part of this organization and representing all of you. And hopefully, hopefully I won't let you down, but uh, I do, I love every one of you and continue to share your stories because those stories are what are, are so powerful and those are what make changes happen. And without those changes, the FDA never would have changed their stance on and understood that every patient is different and that they need to really understand the patient perspective and what we're going through as part of their decision-making processes when it comes to making those decisions for approval of drugs. So again, thank you and thank everyone for attending. And I look forward to years of success with the community and thank the board for all the hard work that they've done and continue to do. Okay. That's it, everyone. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. Thank Thanks you. for joining. So, I'm trying to see. Some. Lots of nice comments. Uh, board, are we staying on? Yeah, just wait for everyone to leave. Yeah. Yeah. Jim, what? Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thanks, Hi. Mom and Dad. Nice. Yeah, nice to see you guys again. We're so proud of the work that you are all doing. It, it's a hard job, but we're so proud of well, you. You've laid wow. the foundation, and it's a strong foundation, and it came from a good place, and we're going to just follow your mission and do the work that you guys laid out for us. So thank you. Thank you. Bob was born Thank going you. at 17. <laughs> <laughs> uh.
almost ready, guys. Oh, we'd be in the green room then. There we are. Yeah, we are now. <laughs> Nobody's really there. That one name won't disappear, but I've removed her. So. Okay. Okay. Good. Great job, Bob and Michelle. Thank you for uh, leading the group, and um, I hope it's you know it was definitely well received, and we answered as many questions as we could, and I, I think it was great. I think that being in front of the community is what the community needed to see the faces yep. behind everything that we're doing. Yep. So I'm glad. Uh, I, I think it went well. I was worried about filling an hour's time slot, but it goes know, fast. It does. It, it does. goes fast. So yeah, it was a little bit, you know, getting started. It was <laughs> a little bit stumbly, but it was, I think it went good. Um, so I think it went well. Great job. Good job. So, well, thank yeah. all of you for the, what is this? Hold on. Maybe stop the recording so we don't share this part with the. Um... Uh, yes. Okay. Video stopped. So.